celebrate 25 years of Street Fighter, and we're gonna get some FaceTime with actor Thomas Jane. Love the Punisher, mm -hmm. Thomas. Because he's watching right now, waiting for that interview. Plus, new Transformers Fall of Cybertron, and the top five things you need to know about this month in the world of games. X-Play starts right now. I'm Blair Herter. This is the P90X of video game shows. You're probably going to throw up while you make it, but your back's going to be huge, right? Look at that. It's because I'm wearing dark clothes. It's bigger. All right, coming up on today's show, we're going to get to FaceTime with Thomas Jane, star of Hung and The Punisher, who's jumping into the gaming world. Two different projects right there. Exactly. Yes. Then we're going to break down everything happening in August in a new segment we call This Month in Games. Plus, we're going to recommend three games that will turn your girlfriend into a gamer in no time. And later, a preview of Transformers Fall of Cybertron multiplayer. It's got horde mode. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But first, it is time to kick someone in the face. Come here. Nope. 25 years ago, Capcom released the original Street Fighter II arcades. The game featured a few familiar faces, and it was the start of one of the most successful franchises around. Mm -hmm. A quarter of a century ago, in 1987, a little-noticed but very important arcade game called Street Fighter quietly appeared in arcades around the U.S. I might have been probably like, you know, six months old at the time. And I was just pounding buttons. I didn't know what I was doing, but I had a lot of fun with that. So that was my oldest memory of Street Fighter. Took a lot of buttons at the time. You know, it was one of those that every other game had like maybe one or two buttons, but this one had like six. The original game only let you play as Ryu or Ken and was primarily a single player game. Fireballs and dragon punches were super damaging, and two or three good hits could spell doom for your opponent. Four years later, in 1991, Capcom released a slightly more popular follow-up known as Street Fighter II, The World Warrior. <laughs> Street Fighter II was just everywhere. When you would go to the arcade, you would see not one or two, but probably like ten. You know, it was, it was phenomenal. Fighting game fans who weren't around back in the arcade days may be surprised to know that a major element of fighters began as an unintentional glitch in Street Fighter II, the combo. People started to do sequence of attacks, like jumping over a fireball and you hit roundhouse, and you hit another roundhouse, and people thought, hey, I can't block that second hit, what, what's going on? You know, what, what is that? Is that is that a glitch that's cheap or what? And there's no combo counters. A game this full of tricks and secrets naturally led to rumors and legends in every arcade. There was no internet, so these older kids, they would they would tell you things, these older kids at the arcade, and they would tell you things like, you can throw Chun-Li's bracelets, there's a special move, and they've totally seen somebody do it at, at this other arcade, and you sit there and you spend 7,000 hours of your life and $20 million trying to do it, and you never do it because you know why? Because it's impossible. And that's why when somebody tells me something to this day, I'm like, shut the f up, you're lying. Because people lie. People lie. Today's Street Fighter is bigger than ever, with major tournaments like Evo drawing thousands of players and spectators to see the best of the best go head to head, just like they did all those years ago. You might not be a Street Fighter fan, but if you're a fighting game fan in general, Street Fighter is probably the one that got you to play. Everybody that played games, everybody that's been in an arcade knows what Street Fighter is. So that's why 25 years later, it's, it's paying homage to where we all kind of grew up and where we all came from. You might know Thomas Jane from movies like The Punisher, The Mist, or Oscar-nominated, in my mind, Deep Blue Sea. But what you probably don't know is that the actor is also writing comic books, he's working on video games, and making insane Punisher fan films. Oh, you got to say yes! You got a choice! Out of my way! On this way! Come on now, kid! You say yes! All you gotta do is say yes! We got a mother problem up in here. Please welcome actor, writer, and Jack Daniel Samurai, Thomas Jane, to the show, everybody. Thank you for being here, sir. Thank, Thank you, you very much for being here. 
People want more of the Punisher. How did that? How did that? Uh, that clip come about? Well, that was fun. I mean, in, in San Diego, we uh, debuted it. We had about. 250 people show up and I had a couple of booth babes pass out these little cards mm -hmm. that said surprise unveiling of a new Punisher skull by Tim Bradstreet and uh, so yeah that was a hell of an unveiling. Yeah I mean Comic-Con is really the place to go for that sort of thing which is why you and Bradstreet said hey if we're gonna make a big announcement about something mm -hmm. it should probably be here and that's where this very terrifying gonna have to work through it with my therapist concoction in front of me <laughs> came to be. So you guys made a really big announcement at Comic-Con involving yeah. this. What is it? This is my little pal. Okay, that's terrifying. That, yep. that, I, uh, that I've put together. Actually, uh, Bernie Wrightson's son, John Wrightson, put this together for me. Okay. It's an alien death spider. 12 legs, four mouths. So these are the, the cre creatures. <laughs> these are the creatures that um, star in our video game or a comic book, Bad Planet, uh -huh. that Tim and I uh, unveiled that we're doing a video game on Kickstarter uh -huh. um, of our comic. And uh, it's got some really interesting gameplay because you've got this guy yeah. who's an indestructible convict. Right? convict. He's broken out of intergalactic prison to come down to Earth because the Earth has been invaded by these 12-legged, dog-sized, four-mouthed death spiders. Right. Um, yeah. Because so it, prisoners are going to be the only ones to incentivize to, to actually save the Earth. Because so as a normal citizen who's not in prison, I'm right. running away your from food, that. Your food, yeah. I don't care about you. I'm getting out of here. Yeah, your prison food. Prison. These guys, they all they know how to do is... is uh, is the bad word that I can't, can I say that on TV? We can no. afford like two bleeps and I haven't cursed at all this show. So go ahead and say whatever you want to say. All these guys do is <laughs> neat. <laughs> we can afford that. I think we can bleep that out. We'll be fine. And so this guy comes down and, and we've got unique gameplay because he hooks up with this little boy who's kind of, he's from Africa, mm -hmm. but, and he's kind of like a computer whiz, but he lives in this poor African village. So uh -huh. he's built this home built computer. So he's kind of the brains. And this guy's the brawn. He, he's got to keep Anon, the little boy, safe. Uh -huh. So you play both characters. See, what's really interesting about this is I read that this was all born kind of from a terrifying nightmare you had. Yeah, it was. What did you yeah. drink before you went to bed? <laughs> right. And where can I get some? Because yeah, what? No, I mean, what was uh, the story behind this? Well, um, I had been in a, an automobile accident. Uh -huh. uh, um, and I'd gone to the doc who'd given me a, some Vicodin, and I started having these th horrible nightmares, these visions, and they, of course, included this guy. You're doing something really cool. You're doing it on Kickstarter, which is a phenomenal way to fund projects. You actually get to control this along with the fans, oh, which is a know, great way to do things. What's great is we came up with this thing where, uh, you know, the, you, you, for a little bit of money, you can join our forum, uh -huh. and you can watch us, you know, Tim and... Everybody, me, myself, will be there and we'll interact with you, but you get to give us ideas about what you'd like to see in the gameplay. Mm -hmm. So we'll take suggestions from people who like, what, what your favorite thing you've always wanted to see in a third person action game. Right. Uh, and, and so that's a fun little thing that we've, that we've right. got for, you know, we've tried to make the prizes r really pretty fun cool. and exciting. And so for the big spenders out there though, for 10 grand, you get something pretty special. For 10 grand, um, you can have dinner with Tim Bradstreet and me. <laughs> and you at the end. I'm like alive. I give you 10 grand, I want you at that dinner yeah, as well. Yeah, and if somebody comes in for the whole 500 uh, grand, then uh, you get date night with Thomas Jane. Oh, but you I have like to be a girl. This is for women only. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I'll dress up as your favorite character. I'm gonna go to a bank right now and then buy a bunch of Jack Daniels and I'll call right. you later. Right, right, this right. All right, man, well, you're gonna hang out. We got a little more uh, time with you right after this commercial break because I want to get into some other cool stuff that you're oh, doing yeah, as well. Oh, yeah, great. Cool, man, we'll be right back uh, after the break. Also on the way, a multiplayer preview of Transformers Fall of Cybertron, what you need uh, to check out this month in games, and three titles that'll get your girlfriend into gaming. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the show. Joining us once again, actor, writer, and scary-ass spider master, Thomas Jane, is with us on the show. All right. Uh, Thomas, I gotta ask you an, an acting question. Right. This is a perfect game to be made into a movie. The convict Looks like mm. he's gonna wear a lot of makeup. Would yeah. you wear that makeup? No, no, no. You get the master of, uh, of disguise, the guy who's been in every movie and he's always transformed himself into somebody incredible. Mm -hmm. Hellboy, you get Ron Perlman. That's a great idea. Oh, yeah. As All a matter right. of fact, Perlman and I are gonna voice this game. Really? Yeah. Have you told anybody that? Can no, I? I haven't even told Ron yet. All right, that's good to know. <laughs> that's an exclusive not only on television, but in Ron Perlman's life right. as well, which is pretty awesome. But we are uh, going to do it. I, I, uh, 
I actually did have spoken to him about it, and, and we will, you know, yeah, man. I mean, he, there's only one guy in the world that could play the convict, yeah. you know? So, of course, it would, it, Ron, and if we ever do make a movie, huh, Ron's gonna hate me for life, because, you know, the Hellboy makeup was about six hours, I mm -hmm. think. Um, this will be eight. Easy. You're just gonna tack on two to be a dick. You're like, yeah, we'll just add a couple more to Hellboy. Uh, so before we leave, I, I just wanted to say, first of all, people can see the Punisher short, Dirty Laundry, on YouTube. I watched it like 50 times. Actually, I'll probably watch it at my house uh, like every day from here on out, so just come on by. And you can, of course, check out Bad Planet on Kickstarter as well. Uh, before we go, though, I did wanna to, to get you into something that we just recently started doing. We're doing an X-Play Challenge, where we have all our guests come on and play an old school game. Wow. Good news, you're the first person to do it so you're going to be champion for at least a week so i'm the only person that's agreed to, to embarrass myself in other words i mean that is one way of looking at it yes <laughs> okay all right so here's how it works you're going to play the original super mario brothers world one one you're going to run the level as fast as you can we're going to place your time up on our flagpole over there on the leaderboard. Uh, fortunately for you, the only person who's done this so far, so you're gonna be first place, so congratulations on that. Uh, so when you're ready, start the run, and then I will give you your time. All right, let's go. Go ahead. Let's go, ready, and go. Got it. That's right. I'm coming for you. That's right. You're already doing better than me. Oh, oh. I turtle a little bit. Oh, oh God. Oh, yeah. oh, Tom Jane's messing with us right now. Oh, oh man. Tom, you're killing it right now, man. Oh. 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 How did that happen? Oh. Dude. Bravo, sir. Logan. 39.7 seconds over here to the leaderboard. Congratulations. 39.7 seconds. That is a time deserving of the top spot. Thank right you. there. Wow. And a kiss. <laughs> <laughs> Big round of applause for Thomas Jane for being the one and only leader on our leaderboard. Also, thank you so much for being here, sir, as well. Thanks, Kyle. Remember, keep an eye out for Bad Planet on Kickstarter and everything else this guy is doing. Thank you, sir. Great. That's all I got. If the special lady in your life has taken an interest in games, she's gonna eventually ask you for some recommendations. And that's when things get a little tricky because you can't just throw a newbie into Halo Reach. Here are three titles that are guaranteed to have her coming back for more. If there's anything that'll throw off a good thing, it's a distaste for your significant other's hobbies. But for those cutesy couples who just have to spend all their time with each other, we've got Gateway Games, a guide to easing people into the shallow end of this deep and wide pool we call gaming. <laughs> Try out Minecraft, a simple sandbox game that's all about building. You create structures during the day and hide from enemies at night. Already a uber hit on the PC, it became even more user-friendly when it was ported over to the Xbox 360 earlier this year and split-screen was added. Rather than refusing to go out dancing on a Friday night, compromise and get yourself a copy of Dance Central 2. This Kinect-enabled 360 game brings all the action of a night out at the club. There's Perform It, a collaborative dance jam. Or for those looking to engage their partner's inner Sasha Fierce, call up Dance Jam and face off against each other. Finally, for those seeking the perfect combination of adorable and adventuring, pick up any installment of the LEGO series. These games play like your childhood and got the remake rights to every great franchise of the last 20 years. Star Wars, Indiana Jones, Batman, and Harry Potter all get the treatment in these great, funny, hour-eating games. Whether it's the tight platforming or the silent reenactments of famous scenes, the LEGO games are a great bet for anybody diving into gaming for the first time. But finally, what it all comes down to is maybe just go ahead and date a gamer and save yourself some time. Coming up, we will break down everything you need to check out in August in our new segment, This Month in Games. Plus, the rare game that's actually coming out earlier than expected. Transformers Fall of Cybertron. More X-Play right after this.
This portion of X-Play is brought to you by Rent-A-Center. With worry-free pricing, there's never a long-term commitment. Now bring it. First of August, yes. and there's a ton of stuff going on in the gaming world this month. Yeah, we've got conventions, big releases, and of course, turducken. Yum. So it's time for our new segment, This Month in Games. First up, QuakeCon. This annual id love fest starts up August 2nd in Dallas, Texas, mm -hmm. with tournaments, a massive LAN party, panels, and id co-founder John Carmack's famous keynote address. Also a chance for fans to get their hands on upcoming Bethesda titles. Uh, I'm also actually going to be there uh, this weekend. Pretty cool. We're going to be doing a whole weekend shooting interviews about Doom 3, BFG, and Dishonored. Um, super honored to be asked to host a panel called The Game of Making Games. And then I'm going to actually try to make a trip to Austin to the Salt Lick. And I'm going to try to eat seven pounds of barbecue all in one meal. Those are my, uh, my plans for QuakeCon this year. See if I make it through. You're gonna smell awesome when you come back. I'm gonna be disgusting. <laughs> uh, okay, well, so Gamescom is the world's largest video game trade show, mm -hmm. and starting August 15th in Cologne, Germany, over a quarter million gamers will get to check out the latest from Activision, Blizzard, EA, Ubisoft, Konami, and more. It's interesting that it's in Cologne because. It needs it. It sure does. Yes, it does. Uh, and I mean, it's, it's actually one of our favorite conventions because I think Tokyo Game Show is really all about more of the international press. And then we have right. E3 here. So Cologne and Gamescom is actually where, where companies are really starting to make some big announcements. So we can expect to see some big, big things from there. Uh, if it's anything, in fact, like last year, there should be some huge game reveals when it starts up. And I think that's just in a, in a few yep. weeks, which yep. is cool. Uh, August 19th is a big, some might say, extra large day for Nintendo. Yes. Not only are they launching their super-sized 3DS on the 19th, mm -hmm. they're releasing new Super Mario Brothers 2. Which I cannot wait for. It's going to be awesome. I mean, if you think about what Nintendo last year, they didn't have that great of a year compared to the other years. They just announced the first quarter loss. So they're really looking uh, to kind of bring back some of the traditional handheld gaming market that they may have lost because of iOS games and Android games and things like that. So this is a really, really big thing for them. And then, of course, when all this fails, just make a new Mario game and things will be fine. People never seem to get bored of it. No. Uh, NFL fans need to circle August 28th because that's the day Madden 13 drops and a lot of Detroit Lions fans get really, really nervous. It's true because cover athlete Calvin Megatron Johnson says he's not actually worried about the Madden curse. Yeah, right. But then neither was pretty much every other dude that's ever been on the cover except for Drew Brees. You don't get hurt. And we love you, and that's why we're paying you a lot. Anyway, didn't work out for other people, but uh, we'll see what happens. <laughs> well, curse or not, EA's perennial Pro Bowl series is hoping to reinvigorate declining sales with their latest Tebowing Enhanced Edition. Can you Tebow in that dress? No. Okay. All right, and then Thursday, August 30th, it's more than just the start of PAX Prime, which we're very excited yes. about. It's actually also the start of the NCAA football season. And now with the ESPN app on your 360 and an internet provider that is affiliated with ESPN3, you can watch more than 400 college football games this season on your Xbox. Yeah, I'm looking forward to watching LSU's regular season. They play really well and then just completely destroy my feelings in the playoffs. It's going to be fun. Starting on August 30th, you can turn on your console and watch all of the games that you'll have a hard time finding anywhere else, like UMass versus UMass. UConn. Don't worry, though, the matchups are going to get better later on in the year. All right, guys, after the break, we're going to preview another big title coming out in August. Yeah, this one stars the robots in disguise. What could it be? What? We should make the transforming sound. Nope, not going to do it. the show. This summer, there isn't a Michael Bay Transformers movie in theaters, and for that, we are celebrating. Even better than that, though, we're about to get our hands on the new Transformers Fall of Cybertron game. There's big action, there's new multiplayer modes, and there's Dinobots. While the storylines in High Moon's Cybertron games are good, it's the multiplayer modes that replicated my favorite Transformer memories of smashing Starscream and Bumblebee into each other in my backyard going pew 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 until I ran out of sugar rush and had to go inside for more pixie sticks. Because the Fall of Cybertron is set on the Transformers' home planet, developer High Moon had carte blanche in designing huge, crazy levels in which to set the ever-growing Decepticon Autobot war. 
The design studio promises 10 different levels in the initial release, which includes a level built around acid baths and a Bespin-like orbital cloud city. Another dream come true from my backyard games of yesterday is the ability to design your own transformer for multiple matchups. Choose from four classes, design looks and themes for them, select weapons, and even choose what they transform into. Did you know the main difference between an Autobot and a Decepticon is the paint job? Multiplayer promises the same metal-on-metal clash-ups as previous games, and the popular horde-like co-op escalation returns so that you and up to three of your friends can fight back-to-back -back against the oncoming invaders. So mix up your Kool-Aid and strap on your Keds light-ups, because Transformers Fall of Cybertron pew pew pews its way onto the PS3, Xbox 360, and PC come August 21st. Next week, we'll be at QuakeCon with the latest on Dishonored and Doom 3 BFG Edition. Plus, we'll celebrate 20 years of bloody fatalities and Mortal Kombat. Then we'll reveal three new exclusive trailers for Borderlands 2. Don't miss it. Plus, we're going to try out the Google Nexus 7 tablet that Morgan is very excited about. Look at that smile. That's genuine. I love gadgets. I never see that smile. It's true. Thank you for watching.